Diluted Earnings Per Share The diluted earnings per share formula is equal to net income less preferred dividends divided by the total number of diluted shares outstanding, which is basic shares outstanding plus the exercise of in-the-money options, warrants, and other dilutive securities. Let's break down the formula starting with the numerator. The numerator of the formula is net income minus preferred dividends. We deduct preferred dividends because that portion of earnings is not available to common shareholders. Earnings per share is calculated for common shareholders. Next, let's look at the denominator. The denominator is weighted average common shares outstanding plus any convertible in the money options, warrants, and other dilutive securities. Remember that the weighted average common shares outstanding is the average number of common shares throughout the period. So for example, let's look at a one year time period. On January 1st, the number of shares outstanding was 1000. On July 1st, the company issued 500 shares, bringing the number of shares outstanding to 1500. This would make the weighted average number of shares for the year 1250 because there were 1000 shares outstanding for the first half and 1500 shares outstanding for the second half of the year. But how do we calculate the number of shares converted from dilutive securities? By looking at the notes in the company's financial statements, you will find a schedule with a list of all the issued warrants and options, along with their strike price or conversion prices and maturity dates. This is where most of the effort is required. A good financial analyst will recreate a table in Excel with all the details, then compare the strike or conversion prices to the current share price or average share price over the period, and determine which securities are in the money. In the money refers to an option contract that, if exercised, would be worth some amount of money. Another way to look at this is to compare the option strike price to the current price of the underlying asset. If the strike price is lower than the underlying asset's price, the option is in the money. The next step is to assume those securities are converted, the company receives the cash, and the number of shares outstanding goes up. Let's take a look at an example of how to calculate diluted earnings per share using an income statement and the option schedule we just looked at. The first number we need to consider is the net income in 2017, which is 4,894. Next, we need to take the number of shares created from the in the money options to reach our number for diluted shares of 2,225. There are no preferred dividends in this example, so we can divide the net income by the diluted weighted average shares outstanding to get a diluted earnings per share of 2.2. Looking back at this example, we can see that the number of diluted shares outstanding was derived by adding the number of shares that would be created if the in the money options were exercised. We can also compare the three numbers for earnings per share where we can see that the basic earnings per share is the highest, followed by the diluted earnings per share, and then the fully diluted earnings per share. The diluted earnings per share paints the most accurate picture for an investor, while the fully diluted earnings per share shows a more conservative, worst case scenario. Investors and analysts calculate diluted earnings per share because basic earnings per share can sometimes overstate the amount of earnings that common shareholders are entitled to. If a company has a complex capital structure that includes convertible securities, diluted earnings per share paints a more accurate picture. This will often be true because companies usually have diluted securities outstanding, like options and warrants, which would increase the total number of shares outstanding when converted. A simple example of this would be a company that offers employee stock options as part of their compensation package. If these options are in the money, that is, strike price is lower than the market price, they should be accounted for in a diluted earnings per share calculation. We hope this video has given you a better understanding of diluted earnings per share.